What is your goal in asking people these questions? Is it to put people in categories and to other individuals from certain categories, or is it to give access to these individuals, or do you want to see how many people access certain programs, or what is your what is your aim and what is it that you're trying to achieve would be something that I would ask. But I would also then ask a follow-up question is, you know, do you know the impacts of these questions, of asking people to identify themselves? I'm sure I'm not the only one, that internal struggle of like, okay, how do I identify myself? My name is Carolyn Liebler. I'm an associate professor of sociology at the University of Minnesota. My research is on the social construction of race and how people answer race questions and then how analysts take that information and work with it. My name is Monica Maria Hurtado and I'm the policy director of Voices for Racial Justice. We make sure that policies that are being discussed in Minnesota, mostly at the state level, are considering the impact on racial disparities. My name is Zakia Gazi. I'm the executive director of a youth mentorship program called Pearls of Hope Community Center in the Twin Cities. I identify myself as a Yemeni American. My name is Mahana Kakish. I'm a certified peer support specialist. I'm going to be opening an eyeglass company. I'm also a certified recovery coach and I do forensics peer support as well. How do I identify my identity? Well, that has changed. So right now I am a BIPOC. I'm Middle Eastern and I, I, will, I will always identify myself as Jordanian, but that's not always been the case for me. Historically, I would choose Caucasian. I was told, because um, I'm light brown and I come from a second world country, even in my uh, school, I'd ask, and white Caucasian, so I've always just thought. It's certainly psychologically painful to be not seen. It also means that the resources that are distributed based on the information in the form can't be used for your community if your community is not represented on the form. Something inside of me kind of breaks every time I select Caucasian. You know, they think I'm a Caucasian, they probably think I'm a white girl. I sound like, you know, if, if I talk to somebody on the phone, I sound like one. Until I walk through the door, they would not know really that I was a woman of color. And when I fill out the form, it's like they want me to identify as that group that rejected me. I thought it also protected me sometimes, but it really didn't. It was kind of troublesome because I used to get treated as a minority. I was actually attacked when I was younger, and um, my mom was attacked too because someone threw a brick in my head. I had to go be taken by the ambulance and some hijacking from Iraq or Iran, even though I speak a different language or something, we would, we would get harassed. And I'm, I was always, I would always say, I'm, I'm white Caucasian, I'm white Caucasian. Everybody needs to be able to feel like they have correctly reported who they are. People who don't see themselves in the question, then they're either forced to respond incorrectly or they just leave it blank. And either way, that's not good data. That's basic <laughs> sociology methods that I teach in my class. It's a bad question if the respondent has to lie in order to answer it. The box really made me feel ashamed of being a Jordanian sometimes because the option isn't there and I'm not recognized as a community. And there was a lot of negativity. You'd hear Trump talk about the Muslims, but I come from that area. And so you're, you're saying that I'm this bad person that comes to the U.S. and that I'm gonna cause harm when I've done so many good things and, and love and try to give back to the community. White is, a, is a also a social construct that goes beyond the color of your skin. It's just to see the story of this country when Irish were not white, Italians, we're not white. I'm starting to realize how deep I was as I get older, of how like I really, I really kind of sub submerged and suppressed 
who I truly was to be accepted by a community that didn't want me um, and didn't really accept me and didn't see themselves in me because I was other. The Middle Eastern and North African category was considered for the 1997 revision of the race and ethnicity guidance, but they decided that they needed more input from the community. And the community had this big shock in 2001 when the 9-11 attack happened. And so the community message to the federal government changed after the 9-11 attack where they started to feel like they didn't want to be surveilled by the government. They felt like they're getting so much surveillance already that having a separate question might bring more. It's this catch-22. We need the data. I know many, many, many people in our communities are ready to share the data. I know that some will be scared to share it because they don't know what, how the data is going to be used. They were, in 2017, about to open this process. They did 1977, 1997, 2017. But 2017 was a challenging year. The office that takes care of this, the Office of Management and Budget, is an office of the president. In 2017, we got a new president and the head of the Office of Management and Budget retired. So that was so much turnover and change that they just stopped working on it. And I don't know if the Middle Eastern and North African would have been in that version of it. I think one of the reasons that Middle Eastern and North African has been part of white is that Jesus is Middle Eastern and that means Jesus was white and if you take Middle Eastern out of white then Jesus is not white and that's a problem for a lot of people. It doesn't make any sense that it would have been white in the first place so somebody was thinking something like that. Because of the huge distrust of our BIPOC communities in government it would be strange that we will find people of color being willing to share information. One thing that the members of the multiple community said is, please share stories with us. Share the stories of why it's important for us to be counted. Make the stories relevant. Connect those stories with our daily lives. Send people like us to talk to us. And I think making it clear to kids that you're beautiful the way you are, you bring so much uh, flavor and zest and just um, um, pizzazz to the world really instilling the love of identity. This is me, this is my identity. I love who I am. It'll alleviate a lot because when you look at that paper and you know, okay, this is who I am, I'm firm in it. You know, that's, that. it is what it is. And it, you just kind of pass on and you continue on the application. We've had enough time to talk about racial equity, but we haven't given individuals from Middle East a space. And I think that because of all the controversy that has happened in the Middle East, but I am American, I am a Jordanian, I love being who I am. And I think right now that uh, we should, I'd like to find out more why we don't have a, a, a box that's for Middle Easterns, because there's a large grouping of Middle Easterns who live in the United States and who give a lot to the economy and support the growth of the United States even in Minnesota.